contentious issue now before the tribunal. But when you look at the law, the Supreme Court in two or three other cases that I'm aware of says, look, Abuja is not a state under the constitution, but we Supreme Court, we accord it that status of a state. But in according Abuja, the state of it, we are not going to give it any privileges. I think it's in the Boris, one of the Boris cases in the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court says, look, Abuja is Abuja. We will not impose any privileges because it is not a state, but we regard it as a state. Now the question is, Turinchi, as the houses will say, the use of and, you are now saying, this says, look, you must have two thoughts in 36 states and, and the federal capital. So depending on which divide you are, as I always say, if you are for the proponents, and they will say yes. 25% uh, must include and will include Abuja. But if you are a constructionist, you are following the mischief rule or whichever this thing, you will know. If a man has 25% in 36 states, but does not have in Abuja, you will now say you can't be president. Does that make sense? You know, many people will laugh at you. And this question of 12 two thoughts, uh, of uh, two thoughts, we have to be careful. By dragging in Abuja now into 36 states, we now have 37 states. Can we ever have two thoughts of 37? So we have to be very careful. But my view is this, reading of that section, looking at all circumstances in Nigeria, you must have two thoughts, generally, of all the states plus Abuja. So the word and, whichever way the judges want to look at it, is, you know, their own head. Far more important is the provision of section 134, subsection 2B of the, of the current of the constitution. It is to say, it to the fact that no presidential candidate can be declared a winner in this election without having 25 percent in the federal capital territory that is very important for the whole world to know that tomorrow's election wherever the, the, the to be finally declared apart from having 25 percent in 24 states of the federal republic of nigeria the federal capital territory is like a compulsory question you can answer all that question but federal capital territory without having 25 percent you go nowhere. This is important. And finally, the broad outline of the 21st century, Dr. Bati, is clear. It offers opportunity for people who can work together. Welcome to my channel, where we discuss everything and all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election in Nigeria. You also, one of the videos you watch is the senior advocate of Nigeria. Robert Clark, who is believed to have worked with Aswad Bolame Tinubu as one of his uh, team of lawyers in Lagos State. He has, uh, as usual, slammed those of us, because those of us who are agreeing with uh, Mike in Guinea saying that those of us claiming that a presidential candidate must score a minimum of 25% of votes in the F in FCT to be eligible to be declared duly elected president of Nigeria. He has slammed us saying that we don't know what we're talking about. But those of us who are saying this are saying it based on the Constitution, Section 1. 134 subsection 2b which states clearly that when two or more candidates presidential candidates contest an election 
for any one of them to be declared president, A, the person mortgage majority of the votes cast. B, the person must get two-thirds of the votes cast in 36 states of the Federation. That's the person must get 25% of the two-thirds of the votes cast in 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. That is what the Constitution say, said, and it is not ambiguous. Even if there are conflicts between Electoral Act and the Constitution, the Constitution takes preeminent. And the word and, to those of us who have read this Constitution, is not ambiguous, it's not too technical to understand, it is not a foreign language uh, that is uh, alien to Nigerians on what and means. And is used in conjunctive form. That is what it is. Okay, so you, you, you let us go through what he, you just saw him said about this uh, while speaking uh, in an interview with Channel's Television. He noted that the Supreme Court had made it clear in some cases that it will not impose any privileges in Abuja. Of course, Supreme Court don't have to impose any privileges in Abuja. The status of Abuja and what Abuja stands for is clear in, in several in other sections of the Constitution beyond Section 134, Section 2B. Okay? In terms of administration, the Constitution was clear that Abuja should be treated as if it was one of the states. But in terms of uh, uh, fiscal responsibility, it also stated that. But when it comes to the election, it was specific that when you get, you must get 25% of the votes cast in two-thirds of the taxi states. And the Constitution knows what it's talking about when it says taxi states and the FCT. So there's no ambiguity on that. I know that this matter will continue to be an issue. And this is one of the issues that will help in removing Aswad Balami Tribu from office through the Constitution. So from time to time, his friends will come on, on TV to give the impression that it doesn't matter. Okay? So he was he's telling us that that uh, Supreme Court is clear on it. That's not true. That's not true. That's, that's not what we are told. In fact, Michael Andoaka, former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, said that the Supreme Court had already ruled on this matter, on General Buhari versus uh, Yaradua in 2008. And the Supreme Court also ruled and agreed that the word and is conjunctive. So he was clear about it. The only thing he, he was adding now was that maybe the Supreme Court will change its mind in 2023. But I don't think that the Supreme Court has any reason whatsoever. The Supreme Court cannot come up and tell us any reason that why is changing his mind from what he ruled in 2008. So that is clear. So it's people like Robert Clark cannot come and uh, deceive ordinary Nigerians by telling us that the Supreme Court had already uh, uh, said something about it on the case of Ibori. What is Ibori looking for that they need interpretation of the status of Abuja? In the case of Buhari versus Sierra Dua, we know that this is a presidential election matter. Has, has uh, Ibori ever contested for president of Nigeria? And it, to the level that there is a need to interpret status of Abuja in a case that concerns Ibori. So, 
So we we don't want uh, those kind of people creating ambiguity where there's no ambiguity at all. Because as I said, this is one of the grounds they will use to annul Aswadu's election. The status of Abuja. It's one of the grounds. This is a ground that has nothing to call witnesses. It doesn't involve INEC throwing itself into it. Of course, INEC aired by declaring him president-elect and now he has been sworn in. Because in the second video following uh, Clark, you had uh, Mike Nguyen. Mike Nguyen is a senior lawyer too. And he has worked with INEC for over 10 years, for about 10 years before he retired. He just retired recently. And you saw that interview he granted to Arise was on, a, on the eve of the February 25 presidential election. And he sounded note of warning that whoever, as if he was, had a premonition that something terrible is going to happen, that they are going to abuse that section of the Constitution. You can see how he was sounding that. Let me say, he wants Nigerians and the whole world to know. Because he knew, perhaps, that some people within INEC were determined to declare anyone, to declare their favorite candidate the winner, and then ask everybody to go to court. And he knew the strategic importance of FCT. He sounded a note of warning that nobody could be declared the winner of the election without getting 25% in Abuja. So if Nguyen knows this, then there's no way Professor Mahmoud Yakubu will not know it, who is the chairman. Nguyen and Mahmoud Yakubu, they have worked together. While Nguyen was the resident electoral commissioner in Akwabom State. And Nguyen knows what he's talking about when he said that getting 25% in Abuja is compulsory. It's like an, uh, a compulsory question that must be answered. Is Nigeria not a country of laws? Ordinarily, by that declaration of Aswad Bola Metruba, the winner of the election, without regards to the FCT. If Buhari, who was president at the time this thing happened, was really a man of integrity and he's not corrupt, he ought to have ensured that uh, Mahmoud Yakub was sacked. He would have ensured he was sacked for sabotaging the election. But instead, Buhari was celebrating the election as if it was the best thing since sliced bread. Now, speaking further, Clark said that uh, uh, it doesn't make sense for anyone to say that a candidate who has 25% in the United States but fails to score 25% in the FCT shouldn't be president. Say so it doesn't make sense. There are so many laws that doesn't make sense, but that is the law. Section 13472B is the law. It is clear. It may not make sense to a lot of people, but that is the law. Not every law makes sense to a lot of people. But that is the law until it's changed. Now hear him what, what he said. He said, this is a contentious issue now. But when you look at the law and cases that I'm aware of, the Supreme Court said that Abuja is not a state under the Constitution, but they will accord it the status of a state. But in according Abuja the status of a state, the Supreme Court said that it will not impose any privileges on it. Now, nobody's talking about special privileges on Abuja. Abuja's privileges had already been imposed on it by the Constitution. For example, the person who administers Abuja is the president of Nigeria. He doesn't have a governor. That is clear. The president appoints a minister who pretend over Abuja on his behalf. The president, being the 
the governor of Abuja in quotes is the person who gives the certificate of occupancy in Abuja in any land and location. And the minister of FCT allocates land in Abuja on behalf of the president. Those are the laws guiding Abuja. It has so these are not privileges. It is already stipulated. So the Supreme Court has no business adding a, giving Abuja any privilege. Abuja has only area councils and not local government. Abuja has no has only one senatorial slot. Abuja does not have a governor in the sense of the states having government, but the president presides over his affairs. Abuja has no legislative arm. The National Assembly makes law for Abuja. That is why the budget of Abuja, like the budget presented by the president, is submitted to the National Assembly for approval. These are clear indications that Abuja has special privileges that it doesn't need any special privilege from the Supreme Court. So what is Clark talking about? That they cannot, that Supreme Court said they can't give Abuja any special privilege. Abuja is already specially privileged to, to, on his administration. Even the indigenous of Abuja felt, those who claim to be indigenous of Abuja, they feel such change in Abuja too. Because they don't vote during gubernatorial elections. Okay? They don't vote during gubernatorial elections. They don't. They don't have a legislative arm. As an assembly makes law for it. Unlike other the states that has a state house of assembly. So it, it, is, it is obvious that Abuja has a special privilege that he doesn't need the help of the central bank, or the, the Supreme Court, sorry, to give it a special privilege. So what, what, what was the Supreme Court talking about that they said that they will not accord Abuja special privilege? Abuja is already having a special privilege. The privilege of the president of Nigeria being their governor, so to say. The pre privilege of having the National Assembly making law for them, unlike others, unlike uh, other states that have their state house for assembly. The privilege of Abuja being classified as if it was a state. And being as if it was a state doesn't mean that it was a state. The constitution, there's a section of the constitution that I itemized, listed the states in Nigeria from A to Z. Abuja's name was not there. So Abuja is not a state. Because the constitution said that Abuja should be treated as if it was a state. It doesn't mean that it was a state. Because if the internment was for Abuja to be a state, it would have been added as a state. So I don't think that Abuja needed any special privilege from the Supreme Court for them to suggest that they are not going to give Abuja any special privilege. The status of Abuja, what it stands for, is uh, what it represents. It's already very clear in the constitution. And now he went on to say that if a man has 25% in taxi state, but does not have it in Abuja, would you say that he shouldn't be president? He shouldn't be president. The constitution is clear. Section 134, section 2B, because it has been, even the Supreme Court has already identified that that and there is conjunctive, and the first, and the FCT, the right capital authority, is conjunctive. You can go to the street and ask any elementary, uh, uh, any elementary uh, uh, person on the street, common man on the street, and ask, what do you mean by an? What is the meaning of an? That you must have A and B and. Okay? You must have one, two, three, and five, and four. What does it mean? Anybody can go to the nearest uh, primary school, go and sample reviews of children. They know what and means. 
I want you to buy for me. You want to send an errand to a child. I want to buy. I want you to buy bread, sugar, and milk. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, the child will get the message. So they, they, Robert Clark cannot come and uh, deceive Nigerians by pretending as if he doesn't know what and means. So since it is a, it's, that section of the Constitution is very clear, if you have tax states, if you win tax states, you didn't win FCT, you will not be president. Of course, it means that uh, if you are that popular, you ought to win FCT because you are going to be not just president of Nigeria, you're going to be acting like the governor of Abuja. And it's important that those you are governing at least have some level of confidence in your capacity to preside over the affairs. And good enough, since 1999, nobody has ever been elected president of Nigeria without winning to 25% in the federal capital territory of Abuja. And uh, he, uh, Clark continued, he said, it doesn't make sense. And many people will laugh at you. Nobody will laugh at you. And let this person don't understand what the law says. There is no way they will laugh at you. You win, you won 26 states, 36 states in Nigeria, and you could not get 25% in Abuja. Well, you have lost it. It's just like somebody scored A1. You made A1. All these eight subjects you entered for in YAC, you made A1, all of them, except mathematics or except English. Nobody is going to give you admission in the university saying, oh, it's because you scored A1 in all the other subjects. Let us allow you to, to be admitted in the university. Nobody will going to do that. You must get that mathematics especially if it's a, a course that requires you a mass. That mass is essential for it. Okay? So the idea that, and also there are courses you also want to read. If you get A's, A1's, and all of them, and all of your courses you put in here, you, you fail to get uh, a credit in English. Nobody will take you in. So the same thing will apply to anybody based on this constitution, section 134, section 2B. If you get if you get if you get 25% in 36 states and you didn't get it in Abuja, no way for you. If you abide, if, if we are to follow the constitution of Nigeria, it is clear. It is clear. So I don't think there's anybody who will laugh at you because you, you want the, the a strict adherence to the law. No. The person that will laugh at you is uh, very ignorant of the law. And now he continues to say, we have to be careful on this issue because by dragging Abuja into 36 states, we now have 37. And can we ever have two-thirds of that seven? Two-thirds of that seven states. Of course, it's not a mathematical impossibility to get two-thirds of that, six, that, that seven states. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a simple, it's a simple arithmetic. Yes, two-thirds of 37 means 24.66. So if you approximate it, it becomes 25 states. It is no different from what we have now, that you get two-thirds of, you get 25% in two-thirds of the 36 states, which is, if you if you do the calculation, it gives you 24 states. Then when you add FCT, you add up to 25. If you are, are you getting it? So it's, it's, it's no different. It, it's not that the reason why they say two third of the test it doesn't mean that it has to for mathematical precision. No, that's not the reason. You just have to get it two third of twenty four states. 
two-thirds of the 24 states. Two-thirds of the 36 states could give you 24 states. It's, it's as simple as that. And then when you add Abuja to it, which is a compulsory question, like uh, Gibi, Mikey Gini used to say, it becomes, uh, it makes it uh, 25. But that's not, Abuja is not a state. So you give it 24 states and their city. It's as, it's as clear as that. So he should not also deceive people by saying that it will be a difficult mathematical uh, equation to solve. If you if you now include Abuja, that Abuja is 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 the thirty seven state, so it therefore makes it ambiguous to get to third of thirty seven states. No, it's not true. It's a simple arithmetic, simple uh, calculation that uh, every child in primary school can be able to handle. So that is the way it is. But I know that this issue will keep on coming up until. The Supreme Court to rule on it, but the fight remains clear. The Constitution is clear. The requirement is section 134, subsection 2B, that you have to get 25% into the of the six states of the Federation, states of the Federation, and the FCT, the Federal Capital Authority. It is clear. Nobody can come and deceive us. And we don't expect the Supreme Court to come and tell us anything different from what is this English language that all of us reads in our Constitution. That the end now means a different thing in 2023 from what it meant to the Supreme Court in 2008 when it adjudicated a matter between General Muhammad Buhari and Omar Musayaradoa. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. Anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video, because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. God bless you and yours.